So uh, we close up uh, this week's coverage with the NFL draft. Last night, the first round, no surprise with the first couple of picks there uh, with the top three. How about Urban Meyer? I think the Scott she was sipping last Sitting night to see thinking. the first One, three picks. Two, three. That I recruited to Columbus. Um, oh, don't think that Ohio State. Oh, you know, they're claiming it. They're claiming it. Off Joe Burrow. They're claiming it. For sure. hey, he's our fourth team guy. Yeah. Goes number one overall. How many times have you seen the 2015 roster for Ohio State this week on Twitter? We get it. We understand it. We get it. How many championships, though, up there with all those, uh, all those players? You know what I mean? Um, so, so Burrow goes number one. No surprise, right? right. And, and you think that he is start ready? Like, is he immediate day one guy? If he's not, then who is? Yeah. And I, I know the current situation, but there's nothing to say that you know, him and Zach Taylor can't go meet somewhere. I mean, you don't have to make it public. There's no, there's nothing saying that he can't go meet with Mixon, the running back, and AJ Green, and all these players. Like that's going to happen. Like you're, you're naive if you think it's not, and just knowing Joe. So, for me, I, I don't think that you want Andy Dalton in that environment. That's just me personally. Yeah. Just him being the starter there, there would be some bitterness. That's just human nature. I don't know what they do with him, right? I don't know if you bring in another vet, but they've seen enough of Andy Dalton. This is a new era for the Bengals. Here is uh, Zach Taylor last night breaking the news to Joe Burrow in real time that he was going to be the number one pick. A 20 draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Joe Burrow. Congratulations, man. We're going to turn in a card, make you the number one pick, and make you a Cincinnati Bengal. Appreciate that, Coach. Ready to go. Good, Excited man. About it. Well, you should be proud of everything you've done up to this point to put yourself in this position. Uh, you've led every single team you've ever played for to a championship, and that expectation has not changed now that you're a Bengal, and I'm looking forward to that, going through that process with you. Yes, sir. Me too. We're excited about it. I think he's already passed the test that you're looking for in an NFL locker room. You can go into this, but to me, going into LSU's locker room two years ago, late into the process, he didn't go through spring. He didn't go through the summer, really. He got down here and had to go through fall camp. In the meantime, he had to win over the locker room, introduce himself to the teammates, win the starting job, familiarize himself with a new area, a new town, a new part of the country, and all the while become a leader on a top 10 team going into his junior season. He accomplished all of that, and then a season later is the bona fide face of the program and a national champion and a Heisman Trophy winner. To me, you're looking for those tests to be passed in the rookie first, second year of an NFL guy. Burrow's already done that. I think he's already answered those questions. It's very difficult to do what he did, come in here and then gain the team's confidence in weeks. I mean, he, he had everybody's confidence. And y'all will hear me say this a bunch, but your quarterback has to have the entire team, not just the offense. He's got to have everybody listening to him. And so when he gets up there and he talks, he's got to be the leader of the team. And Joe has that ability. We all know that. And when you look at the Bengals roster, I think they only have five players that have played 10 years or more. So it's not the oldest team. When you look at like Carlos Dunlap and Geno Atkins on, on defense, and then A.J. Green and Andy Dalton is the other guy yeah. that's played a decade in the league, well, uh, we don't assume Andy's going to be there. And A.J. Green is a guy that, if I'm Joe, and I know Joe already knows this, I go to A.J. Green before I go to anybody else and say, I'm your guy. I know you don't like it here. I know you've been unhappy in the past. I'm going to throw you the football. We're going to be dynamic together. I know that you're, you're in your 10th year but you're still only 31 years old. You're going to be healthy, and we're going to have a healthy relationship. Yeah, so uh, last night, Joe Burrow goes number one. No surprise there, as we said, at the top of the draft. After that, Chase Young second to the Redskins. Uh, really, again, no surprise when you looked at the second pick in the draft. Many anticipated the, uh, the top rush end from Ohio State to be there with Washington. A couple of natives. I love that, you know, Burrow's from Athens, Chase is from Maryland. Both those guys kind of go to their hometown teams at one and two. Then Jeff Okuda who is a, a cornerback out of Ohio State, goes third. And then it gets, it gets a little wacky. It gets a little crazy. Tua goes fourth, or uh, excuse me, Tua goes fifth to, uh, to Miami um, as they grab him right before San Diego, before your Chargers uh, land on Herbert. Uh, and if you were watching real time last night, uh, you obviously didn't like the selection. I wanted Tua Tagovailoa to go to the Chargers. I think he is a guy that is definitely the second-best quarterback in this draft. Justin Herbert has the talent. There's no question about it. And he's, he's look, he's going to be compared to a lot of quarterbacks, but 
A lot of people are going to connect him to Ryan Leaf, who went to the Chargers. Big, Pac-12, strong-arm quarterback. But can he be a leader? Can he be that guy that captivates your team? That was the knock on him. When you talk to coaches and scouts around the NFL, they would tell me he's not an alpha. He's not an alpha. He keeps to himself. He, You know, a little bit of a nerdy guy, which, look, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But you can't be that and be the leader of an NFL franchise. You can't be passive. You can't be a guy that keeps to yourself. You have got to be the guy that everybody pays attention to and everybody listens to. We'll see if he can change that. He Look, he's 6'6", 235 pounds with a strong arm. He's got the ability there. You've got to develop him. Yeah. You've got to develop him because if you miss on this pick, this is the first guy you take after you've had Phillip Rivers for 16 years. And then you had, before that, Drew Brees. Man, you cannot miss on this pick. And I, I don't love the fit. So Herbert goes sixth to the Los Angeles Chargers. After that, Carolina Panthers make a uh, NFC South selection with Derrick Brown, who's the top defensive tackle in this, in, this, uh, in this draft. Isaiah Simmons, the linebacker, kind of the hybrid uh, defender out of Clemson, goes, uh, goes eighth overall to, uh, to Cliff Kingsbury and the, uh, the Arizona Cardinals. Kingsbury, as we mentioned going into the intro, absolutely won the night from just a, uh, a viewing perspective. Mm. Um, if you were looking at the setups, I thought Arians had a nice setup. It looked like he was outside um, in, the, in the Tampa sunshine, kind of showing off the weather. I thought Zach Taylor in Cincinnati looked very Midwest and very Cincinnati. Um, and I thought like he's in the corner of a ballroom. I mean, just itself. very plain closet, carpet on the wall type look. Mm. Uh, and then Kingsbury with just the flex, man. I mean, what did that pad cost him? I mean, look at this thing. Millions. I mean, I've seen a lot of Twitter comments from ranging from what do you need a fire pit in Arizona to is this a car dealership that they've moved the inventory off of the, the showroom floor and just allowed Kingsbury to sit sockless, tucked in. The fire pit in the middle of the floor, though, like in real low, like what are you doing with that? There's well, no chairs around it. I mean, Coach, you're looking at the number one bachelor pad in the world. Special, I mean, no doubt in America. I mean, Kingsbury. Um, I, I know that he, he he's got a he's got a girlfriend, but 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 all intents and purposes, I mean, he has weathered through the football life without getting married, uh, and really more impressively, without having any children, um, to find himself as the head yeah. coach of the Arizona Cardinals as a single man living this type of life. And, you know, Cliff likes to have fun. Uh, my recruiting host when I went to Texas Tech. Cliff Kingsbury and Wes Welker. <laughs> wow. They did not miss a good time. Coach, well, I mean, the, the, the third quarterback, the third string quarterback days when he was in New Orleans is legendary. Legendary. He was behind, I want to say, like, Jim Everett and Aaron Brooks. Probably somebody named Billy Joe. And Billy Joe? A chance. That yes. Billy Joe on the roster. I mean, the stories that came out of Kingsbury during those days. Vrabel's kids, as we talked about last night, one of them was on the, one of them was on the toilet. Uh, one of them was miming behind him. I mean, it was absolute quarantine days yes. over at the Vrabel house. Like they have lost their mind. I, th there was one. There was one shot of Vrabel where he released a dip out of his front lip that looked like a cow patty. I mean, it looked like he hawked up like a cow, piece of cow manure when he when he shot this. Uh, did you see this? That's a hell of a turk he's got in right there, I mean, Coach. That's that is can. a major league. That's a Lenny Dykstra type dip right there. He was, uh, hey, he, hey, he was a hell of a football player. I played against him. He had the longest arms in the world. Like, you couldn't get any hands on his shoulder pad. Did he have pad. two Super Bowl touchdown receptions? Yes. That's incredible. Uh, Danny, I think I, I linked the, uh, the, the, the Twitter shot of him spitting out that dip. <laughs> I mean, for people that are watching it. a hell of a dip. It's a, that was the most visual appealing. And then C.D. Lamb was on the clock with the Dallas Cowboys. And he's got a couple of phones on his lap that he's working. And his lady sees an opening to snatch one out of his hands. And CD just goes straight Spider-Man on her and gets that phone back. I mean, the, hey, the, the, and, bat, the bat phone ain't for you to see. Hey, and look, Hester, you know what else he did that, that I thought like really kind of tipped off his night was that he reacted to the social media barrage that came to him. Like he quote tweeted one. It was like, man, y'all chill out. It wasn't even like that. It was just an avalanche after he, <laughs> after he prodded. The social, I kind of feel bad for him because that's his night. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that's his and night, now bro. That's, and that's now his memory. night is gonna be, it's gonna be a meme forever. And, um, and the poor girlfriend just kind of like yeah, looks away, like it. she uh, had to play it, like oh man, we're on that, we're on national television. Everybody sees what's oh, happening. She's got the awkward grin. Mm. 
it was just it was a <laughs> look at I get so much anxiety in watching that every single time. 